Well, here we are. Another week. I know I'm a little late, but it happens. So first thing you see at the bottom of your screen, the ticker here, West Michigan has clinched a spot in the GLAF championship, which will be sometime in May. I don't know what the other five teams are going to do. So that's fine. In the AAL, West Texas, Delaware, and Carolina have all been removed from the league. Best game of the weekend by far was Wheeling and Jersey. Of course, Peach State won, Steel City won, and the Dallas Falcons, led by Tyron Washington, all won this past week. And if you haven't seen, you know, a couple things, if you haven't seen a couple things from the from the AAL two that you know I was helping out with um, one was the um, round table with Sam Shady, Chris Voss, and all the other cats out there along with a couple other guys. Um, you know, definitely some people I haven't seen before. Definitely some people I've never met before, but I met them this past Saturday morning, which that was good. That was good. Um, and then, of course, the Joshua Franklin interview. Of course, if you haven't seen that yet, definitely get on that. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how things go along the AL, too. Because, again, that Jersey wheeling game was top-notch. We're talking production was top-notch. Everything was top-notch. Very good game between two teams that were that are definitely very good. Jersey, you know, won the AL2 last year. Um and Wheeling, led by Coach Rez, Joshua Rez Nalo, you know, they got something cooking over there. And I think it's going to be a long year for other teams in the AL too. Um, again, West Banco Arena will also apparently host the AAL2 championship. But that has not – that has been confirmed by the PDF Sports Network. But it has not been confirmed by A.J. Roke and – the rest of the team of the AL2 team. So uh, they'll announce that in a couple weeks. So that's what they're telling me. And that's what they told other people that they'll be announcing what in the world's going on in a couple weeks. So I imagine it'll be hosted in West Banco Arena in Wheeling, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. So let's talk the NAL. Of course, Oklahoma's been, you know, in a bit of a pickle. They didn't play their non league opponent this past week. Omaha beat the brakes off of Idaho and Colorado surprisingly harassed Guy Myers and, you know, got the win there. Um, the big thing is Oklahoma, you know, the situation in Oklahoma, we don't know what in the world's going on. You know, there's like people are saying, oh, well, there's there's this, there's that. You know, there's the arena, you know, or that's been booked. There's no turf. There's no place for the players to play in. And, you know, you got the owner, the new owner of Oklahoma, you know, trying to calm the situation down a little bit. But it's like, you know, you guys haven't played a home game yet. You were supposed to play your first home game March 30th. But again, you know, due to Topeka and North Texas, you know, getting booted, you know, they had to change that to last week, but you canceled that. And then now, um, this game got canceled. And speaking of um, more of a breaking news story from today, Colorado's um, non-league game, their next non-league game, which shouldn't have been a non-league game. Again, somebody in the NAL, there's enough teams in the NAL still where you can, you know, fix that. But no, we had to play non-league games. You had to add more non-league games to the schedule. No, no, no. It's whatever. So that that also has been canceled. So due to hockey, but it's not like, oh, well, due to new ownership changes and yada, 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 we're canceling this game. This is not the Oklahoma situation. Something's going wrong in Oklahoma. I don't know what it is yet. Could it be workers comp again? I don't know. You know, people are, people are throwing that out there. So I don't know what's happening. We'll find out. As the weeks go on, um, in the AIF, of course, you know, Columbus beat the brakes off Harrisburg. Why are we not surprised about that? And Corpus Christi had a non league game, so that was that was easy. So, Columbus, you know, still looking like the cream of the crop of the league in the IFL. San Antonio won their first game, Green Bay is 3 1, 
Jacksonville looks looks rough. I mean, you got a guy by the name of Johnson for Vegas. You know, he's been doing his thing. Arizona barely got by Iowa. Frisco, you know, they beat Tulsa by 28. Quad City surprisingly got the win against Mass. Um, Northern Arizona beat Duke City easily, and San Diego Bay Area was an absolute slobber knocker, 53-50 in favor of the Panthers. And, you know, it, it, it's, again, you know, there's a couple things that have been going on in the IFL, the whole Lorenzo Brown Jr. situation. You know, he's been moving around, but I think he's going to stick um, in Sioux Falls in a support role to help out Sioux Falls quarterback. Um, Arizona, you know, still struggling. Um, you know, San Diego, you know, they have a pretty good situation going on, but uh, yeah, not it didn't work out this week, you know, for them. So, you know, it it, it is what it is. And I mean, the IFL's, you know, getting kind of, it's getting, it's getting on, it's getting on, you know, Massachusetts again, that game was very surprising to me that. You know, the boys out in Massachusetts could not get it done. I was very surprised by that. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen there. But, yeah, the big thing is that this week now we're into a new week, and that means the AFL 3.0 is going to be ever so close to the starting. It is less than five days away now from the beginning of AFL 3.0 with the Albany Orlando game starting us off. And um, there's a couple things that have gone wrong. You know, the jerseys I get, the preseason games have been kind of hit or miss. Um, you know, Oregon is one shining example because they have a arena that's set up where it's like you have the guardrails, like the actual metal guardrails. There's no padding along the walls. There's no hockey-type padding along the walls, so you can't really do anything. So it's just the hard metal bars and everything like that, and that could cause injury if, you know, that's one thing. There's no nets as well, and the field just kind of looks, eh. It looks rough, and they use the Oregon High Desert Storm uniforms. That was also insane to use, you know, insane thing to use from a lead that you probably, you know, probably you had, you had two teams set up, you know, that could, you know, it could have been, you know, something, but uh, yeah, those two teams died. So, and then, you know, Lu Louisiana, you know, out in Louisiana, Lake Charles, the arena ASM, we're like, nah, we're, we're not, we're not doing this without y'all paying. And then the AFL is like, oh, well, we paid. We got our nets. We got our everything for – we got our we, – it's basically a he said, she said type thing. And instead of all that, they, the, the the New Orleans voodoo, they move their stuff to Lafayette in the older arena for the voodoo to play in, which is – Kind of silly, but whatever, you know. I mean, is everything completely known about what's going on? Like Georgia's situation, like like the Predators could like the Predators could have a seventh home game out in Georgia, or rather, Georgia's coming up to Orlando potentially for the seventh game because Georgia still probably has no arena at all. So there's just a lot of things going wrong. You know, preseason games have been played and everything like that. But um, that doesn't mean anything when, you know, the games start this week and there's still so many questions up in the air. Um, the website has not been updated. Schedules have not been completely updated. Southwest Kansas, the storm are looking for host families to house players and people are getting on them about that. And it's like, um, you couldn't have did this earlier. That that is one thing that you know could have been done earlier. But um, I don't know. I don't know, man. You know, this week in indoor football has been crazy. Another crazy week has 
finally ended as there's some background noise. Ignore it. Um, so yeah. Um, the AL2 news, that, you know, that was actually came out on Thursday, but I didn't know until Friday night during the Franklin interview. I didn't know until Joshua told me that those three teams were kicked out. And Delaware never posted anything anyway, so if they never posted, they were already dead. So, yeah. Um, that'll do it for me as far as, you know, everything going down, you know, the IFL is still kicking. I can't really say too much what I've been saying already. And the L still, you know, doing their thing. Everybody's doing their thing. We're just waiting on one more and that's AFL 3.0. So we'll see what in the world happens this weekend. Um, catch you all Sunday night at about eight thirty nine 9 o'clock after the conclusion of the AFL 3.0 game on the NFL Network. Remember, some of the games will be on NFL Network. Some of them will be on, like, great television in your area, wherever you live at, you know, in – and around wherever, you know, these AFL 3.0 teams are. So, yeah, that'll do it for me. I'm going to, you know, record some other videos and put those up. So whatever order you see this, whatever your order comes after this is what you're going to see next. So take care. I'll see you all soon.